We're driving a 2022 Toyota Tundra. Coming up, I'm going to disappoint my wife a little more than usual. But first, information explosion. This is the third generation Toyota Tundra. It's all new for 2022. Let's begin with interior. Oh, I bet you have interior thoughts. Toyota! Toyota! That's all I can think of when I sit in here. Those are big letters, but they only come in the TRD Pro. If you get another oh. trim, you're not gonna have the big reminder that you bought a Toyota on the dash. I think they've done a really good job finding a balance between the big masculine knobs and buttons and stuff, and also having things that are easy to use. The turnstocks feel like normal turnstocks. They don't feel like absolutely huge. There's this really cool center console. There's this bit at the top that has a shallow little area for small items. This part, you could store things or you can slide it back. And then there's a release on either side so that you can open this giant area, which is large enough to put a person, which is one of my favorite things. And they've uh, also put the little coin slots for humans who still have coins. I don't know who those are. And then you got your cup holders, room for like two phones side by side. Only one has uh, the wireless um, phone charging. Great door storage. Plenty of bottle space for my lady who likes to drink all the beverages. Yes. I should note that if you get one of the base trims like the SR or the SR5, the uh, dash here and the doors and the center console are not uh, soft like this. So if you want soft interior bits, you have to move up to the limited trim, which starts at $47,000. If you look here at the uh, climate controls, it's very hard to read because they're in perpetual shade because they're underneath the uh, screen. And if you're wearing sunglasses, they are impossible to see. So you can't tell which one's the sync, the auto, or the up down button for the uh, climate controls. We should talk about the seats though. In typical Toyota fashion, they uh, are pretty much pressure point free. I find them very comfortable. There's like a camo layer under the black layer. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of nice. We're driving the crew cab, which is the bigger of the two cab options. And in the back seat, so much leg room, so much knee room. Headroom is much tighter than some of the other full-size pickup trucks we've driven recently. I do fit in the outboard positions, but in the middle seat, my head is, is cramped to one side. Behind those seat backs, you can flip them forward and there's a little nook so you can do a little storage back there. And then the seats do flip up but I was expecting standard underseat storage and there is none in here because there's a battery there because this is the hybrid. If you want underseat storage, you'll want to go with the non-hybrid uh, engine. The car seat was simple to install. The latch points are just exposed. I felt like the door opening was adequate. Kiddo, how is it climbing into this thing? Yeah, it's a pretty big leap in, though I'll tell you why this doesn't have steps. Because this is the TRD Pro and it's meant to go off-road, and those steps inhibit your ability when you're doing uh, rock crawling and such. Couldn't we have like rock rails slash steps? <laughs> yes, you could. <laughs> and now the time has arrived, let's talk about the bed. It's aluminum reinforced composite, so it's not gonna rust and it's lightweight. Some slots for putting like two by fours in so you can kind of partition things. Most trims have this removable cleat system, uh, which is Ooh. great for tying things down. And they look like baby Yoda if you look at them from the top. To my eyes, they look more like a toy Yoda. Yeah, we did it, dad joke, woo! <laughs> a feature that's on higher Tundra trims is a little um, side release for the, <laughs> I'm choking on my words, uh, for the uh, tailgate. And other than that, it's pretty basic back there. I'm so used to like weird, innovative steps. And to be honest, getting in and out of the back of a Toyota Tundra, if you're not agile, is kind of difficult. As for safety, neither the NHTSA or the IIHS have rated the crash worthiness of the Toyota Tundra, but it does have eight airbags and it has a standard Toyota Sensing 2.5 suite of active driver assists, including things like automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection and also an uh, intersection warning. So if you try to pull in front of a car, it will warn you and even apply the brakes to keep you from pulling in front of uh, the oncoming car like an idiot. And then it's got lane keeping assist in addition to lane departure warning. It also includes full speed dynamic cruise control. Then if you want blind spot warning, that is available as an option. Overall family, what do we think? Is this thing family friendly? Family Yay! friendly. Yes, family friendly. Rear window test. Oh, hi. <laughs>
Not that rear window, though I will point out that all Toyota Tundras have power sliding rear windows. In the double cab, it's a sideways sliding window, and in the crew cab, it's the whole window just slides down. Now, the other rear window test. Armrest test. Driving in a comfortable eight and four position, my elbows have pretty easy reach to both of the armrests. The outboard is a little bit more of a reach, but not so bad. Those are very soft perches, though. I'm gonna go 90% on the inboard, 80% on the outboard. Hey, would you like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family, plus the occasional helicopter adventures? If so, feel free to subscribe. What's next? Style? Style! We're stuck at a red light. This is a great opportunity to thank Flying Eyes, the sponsor of this video. Flying Eyes sunglasses are not like normal eyewear. They're made out of the stuff called brazilamide that makes them extremely bendable and that allows them to have these super thin temples which work very well underneath the headset in a helicopter. They also make daily living a little more bearable. True, I wear the ophthalmic line of glasses so I wear them all the time. They're super lightweight and comfortable. Plus, they come with these removable magnetic tinted lenses, so they double as sunglasses. Flying eyes work great in the helicopter. They work great in Evie's normal life. If you would appreciate aviation grade eyewear, click the link in the description below, use the promo code MICA, and you'll save 10% on flying eyes. In looking at the Toyota Tundra, to me it looks brawny and technical. What I find fun is that the uh, designers for the Tundra apparently described it as chiseled liquid, <laughs> which Ooh. if I ever had a stage name, <laughs> like, a, like a, a erotic dancer, that's definitely what it would be. <laughs> Hello, Iguana. <laughs> this might be the curviest truck we've ever reviewed. The bed especially, it's nothing but curves. I really like the look of this thing. I also like the fact that they offer the Tundra in a variety of interesting colors. Yeah, there's your boring silvers and stuff, but they also have smoked mesquite, army green, and lunar rock. This is solar octane, which is only 425 bucks, and it does make a statement. The statement is, I don't care about your retinas, look at my truck. <laughs> I actually would buy my Tundra in this color. And I also like the TRD Pro. It uh, gives you those black BBS wheels with the 33 inch tires and a one inch lift in front. And it just looks a little bit meaner than your standard Tundra. What do you guys think? Do you like the look of the Toyota Tundra? If yes, if no, tell us in the comment section. If you're curious what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can give us a follow over on Instagram, in motion. Driving the Toyota Tundra home on the freeway, I found it to be a very comfortable and controlled ride. I think a big key to that is the fact that it has moved from leaf springs in the rear to coil springs in the rear. The other thing I noticed is that I found myself driving comically fast and being unaware of it. I'm like, oh my God, is that the speed I'm going? I think what was happening is that the interior is fairly quiet and I think there's an effortlessness to the powertrain uh, that led me to uh, break the law. Uh, and that's my long way of saying it was my fault. Good lesson for our girl. Mm -hmm. Yes, deflect blame when possible. That does lead into the powertrain, which is the iForce Max. So there's two engines, we'll talk about them in more detail in a moment, but this is a V6 twin turbocharged, and it's a hybrid. That hybridization is really transparent. You wouldn't necessarily know it's a hybrid just driving the thing around. We've been driving a lot of full-size trucks recently, and one area of, of scrutiny for me is the brakes. This is a big pickup truck, and it's a hybrid, and yet the brake feel, for me, totally works. Here I am coming to a smooth stop. Pretty smooth stop. So much easier than when we drove, let's say, the PowerBoost Ford F-150, which is their hybrid recently. In my freeway drive, I also noted that the steering has a very good on-center feel. And even up here in the mountains too, there's sort of um, an easy agility to it. I mean, for a pickup truck. I really like driving this truck around, but what does Evie think? Evie's driving, quick question, how do you feel driving this? It doesn't drive like a big truck necessarily, but it's clearly a huge truck and I don't like being behind the wheel of it. Evie's not a fan of the responsibility of managing a really large vehicle, so big trucks nope. like this are always a little bit awkward, but you're steering around a little bit, how does that feel? The steering feels good, actually. It feels more nimble than I would expect from something of this size. Mm -hmm. Floor it. Whee! and brake. <laughs> How do you feel about the power? I felt like it took a beat for the um, engine to really kick in, but when I do the same thing from a stop, I feel like it moves pretty quickly. 
the electric motors uh, begin immediately and then if you're already in motion then it has to downshift a few gears uh, for the gasoline engine to kick in so it's kind of a one-two punch if you're already yeah. moving off the line then it's not having to downshift it just sort of goes i do love the way this sounds you do i do what do you like about it it's very loud <laughs> loud okay any <laughs> other thoughts throaty throaty okay cool in the beginning of the video, I teased that I was going to disappoint my wife a little more than usual. Uh, here's how I'm going to do it. That sound is fake. Boo! When you get on it, go ahead and get on it. That meaty thrum, that brrrr, yes. that is being generated by the speakers inside the vehicle. Well, that's fine. It sounds good. I think that's how most people will react to the fake engine sound, which is like, this thing sounds great. As long as you're inside and you never get outside of the vehicle, you'll hear what it's at like outside. And it's meant to make it sound more like a V8 because this is a hybrid V6. Uh, and the interesting thing is you cannot deactivate it as a driver. It's just always on and I hope you like it. Well, luckily I do like it. She does like it, so this works out <laughs> great. Last question, how's your visibility? Out the front, I feel like I'm getting a lot of hood. Mm -hmm, a lot of hood. <laughs> over my right shoulder, visibility is pretty decent. Over my left shoulder, the B pillar, which is a pretty thick one, and because I'm so far forward, it's right in my field of view. Okay, so pretty standard visibility issues for you, but not necessarily worse than most? Correct. All right, we got Evie's thoughts. I'm getting back in the driver's seat. In total, I really like how the Toyota Tundra drives, but you know, this is the TRD Pro. We should probably take it off-road. We're driving off-road and we've got a few things working in our favor. So the TRD Pro has internal bypass Fox shocks. It's got a skid plate underneath there. It's got a locking rear differential, which we don't have to make use of just yet, but um, you've also got multi-terrain select. So it's basically different drive modes depending on which terrain you're driving over. We've got deep snow, mud, sand, dirt. Let's just leave it in dirt and see what happens. The thing I'm noticing is that the suspension compliance in this rough environment is good and that actually matters if you like the people you're off-roading with <laughs> the other thing I'm noticing is that there's a little bit more immediacy from the powertrain so if you're going through dirt that uh, power comes in promptly wouldn't want you getting stuck the challenge with off-roading something big like this is that it is big and so if you're on narrow trails and a lot of the trails that we drive on are this can be a little bit of a liability the other challenge especially with the big long pickup truck is break over angle so if you're doing like rock crawling um, there may be an increased chance of dragging the bottom of this thing uh, over some of those rocks versus let's say in our bronco that said for moderate off-roading this feels like a really great platform all right i'm gonna force the situation here let's get articulate okay there we go Okay, so we're struggling for traction a little bit here. Kind of hard time getting up there. I'll bet if I activate this rear locker, locker is activated. Do you see how much easier that went up? Wow. Incredible, huh? That was remarkable. Yeah, you have all the wheels spin when it's not active and then bam, as soon as you lock those rear tires together, it just immediately gets power to whichever tire is touching the ground. So easy. So that really revolutionizes what it means to off-road in a Tundra. All right, I think we've had the off-road experience. Let's get back on the street. Hey, we survived driving off-road. Let me very quickly thank the folks who support us on Patreon. Hey, patrons. We love getting to know you guys over there, and we love uh, giving you early access to our videos. Thank you for your support. Next up, Emotion Factor. Any emotional levers being pulled for you, sweetie? From the exterior styling to the capabilities that come with a truck, and the fact that you can take this off-road for sure. Modifying that further, there's the fact that it's a Toyota. And if there's one thing we've noted um, from some of the Toyota buyers who have weighed in on our other videos is that Toyota buyers feel great about having bought Toyotas. I think there's an emotion factor here, but what do you guys think? Are you feeling emotionally moved by the Toyota Tundra? If you are and you'd like to buy one of your very own, I'm guessing you're gonna have to sell your current car first. If you'd like to know what your current car is worth or how much you should pay on your next Toyota Tundra, click the Kelly Blue Book link in the description below to get your vehicle pricing. Onward to remarks. Remark number one, infotainment. The standard infotainment uh, on the lower trims is an eight inch screen, but if you go to the limited trim or higher, you get this 14 inch unit and that is a lot of real estate. <laughs> By the way, both screens get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard. Sweetie, using this interface, how have you found it? It's really simple. There aren't a ton of options on it, but it looks very crisp 
and I enjoyed using it. It almost feels like something's missing because there's no home screen. And what they left out was something that, as it turns out, we maybe didn't need. Mm. You have these persistent submenus on the left side, and you just are always in one of those submenus, and it works just fine, actually. Another element I really like about this system on the higher trims is the 360 camera. So many different angles, and uh, when off-roading, it's really helpful for seeing where your tire's going, and just having that um, full 360 field of awareness. I love how it automatically comes on when you're coming to a stop or pulling into a parking space. One more screen note, on higher trims, there's a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. All right, let's hit on engine choices. So the basic engine is a 3.5 liter twin turbocharged V6. Technically at 3,445 cubic centimeters, it should be a 3.4 liter, but who's counting? If you move up to the iForce Max, it's basically the same engine, but hybridized. So you get more power and better fuel economy. If you want the iForce Max, that'll cost $3,400 extra. If you'd like four wheel drive, that'll be an extra $3,000. Interestingly, Max tow is 12,000 pounds, but it comes with the four x two double cab SR5 trim with the less powerful non-hybrid V6. Weird. As for body styles, there's a double cab and a larger crew cab. There's a five and a half and a six and a half foot bed. There's also an 8.1 foot bed, but that's only offered on the double cab SR and SR5 trims. Beyond that, there's a zillion other trims. There's a fancy capstone version, the rugged TRD Pro we're driving, and the basic SR trim. Sweetie. Yeah. Can I give you a trim recommendation? I guess. Before you ask, our trim recommendation is which one gives you the features you would regret not buying, but at the lowest possible price. This is the rare occasion where the base trim would work just fine. Smart key access and automatic climate control both come standard across the entire lineup. So if you just want a vehicle with a bed, the SR trim, which is the cheapest one possible, is fine. Personally, I'd upgrade from the double cab to the Crew Max because it's only about $2,000 and it adds rear seat vents and upgrades the audio from six to nine speakers, plus it's much roomier. That said, if you plan to do truck stuff like trailering or tying down loads in your bed, I'd get the SR5. It adds $5,900 $930 to the price tag, but that comes with alloy wheels, a rear armrest with cup holders, multiple drive modes, including a tow mode, a tow receiver with seven and four pin connectors, trailer sway control, and side rails with those adjustable, adorable cleats that look like Yoda. I'd also suggest maybe adding the SR5 convenience package for 580 bucks because it adds blind spot warning and a larger 32.2 gallon fuel tank because the SR and SR5 trims only come with a 22.5 gallon tank. As for the competitors, it's the Ford F-150, Ram 1500, Nissan Titan, and Chevrolet Silverado. Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis! In thinking about the essence of the Toyota Tundra, I'm reminded of the uh, light up signs we got from Blipshift that we now have in the office. When I have that on, that alerts my daughter that I'm working and she should um, come to me with her question later. In similar fashion, the Toyota Tundra is highly effective and a little bit flashy. To me, the Tundra is the light up Blipshift, Blipshift shines, Blipshift shines. <laughs> God, that's hard to say. The Toyota Tundra is the light up Blipshift sign of full size pickup trucks. Woo! If you would like to see more of these kind of videos where we review cars as a family, plus the occasional helicopter adventure, feel free to subscribe. If you're curious what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can give us a follow over on Instagram. Family, I think we've done a good job reviewing the Toyota Tundra. May I have a five and a five? And you, come get your high five. Ah!